In addition to the places PowerShell makes use of hash tables, we may use them ourselves. They're used heavily in desired state configuration, creating configuration data sections. We can use them with splatting, as we're going to see here. Pretty much any place that I might need a structured table, I might be able to make use of a hash table. Splatting, in particular, is a handy trick, a one-dimensional type of a hash table that we can make use of. Using this net, new net firewall rule command as an example, you can see this rule has a lot of properties. Display name, profile, protocol, direction, action. And I can write it all out in one long line like this, but it can be difficult to manage, difficult to modify, difficult to read. And so splatting is a way to store these details about a command in a hash table and then call that hash table when we run the command. So instead of doing it the way I've done here, we can create a hash table, say I call this params, storing it in a variable. The hash table is going to have a at symbol, curly brace at the top, curly brace at the bottom, and then we create a list of the values like display name and set it equal to allow ping and profile set it equal to domain. Let's see, protocol, set that equal to ICMP v4. The direction parameter, that's going to be inbound. The action is allow. And what else do we have here? That's it. There are some more details we could include, but you can see how it's nicer, it's organized more cleanly, it's going to be easier to update probably going forward, and it's also particularly useful if we're going to be repeating it, if we're going to be using this same set of parameters for commands later on. In this case, I'm just using it for one command. Then to use it, to use that hash table, I use the at symbol and the keyword params, and this is a, an indication to the command new net firewall rule that it should fetch all of its parameters from this hash table we've created. So I run that uh, and I got the message access is denied because I'm not running this as administrator. Let's try this once more. If I copy this and run it in an admin shell, like over here, we'll paste it there we go. No error that time because I'm logged on as an admin. But that's just an example of a one-dimensional hash table. Another example would be something like this. Maybe I create a computer, or we'll call it computer's hash table. And at symbol at the top, curly brace, curly brace. And then in between, I create a key for London Server 1, set it equal to... 172.16.0.40, which is the IP address for London Server 1. And London DC 1, the IP address is 172.16.0.10. This is a simple hash table, a one-dimensional hash table. If we check the value of computers here, the computers variable, it contains the entire hash table. And this is honestly the most common way you're going to use a hash table. It's just a simple one-dimensional table, keys and values, keys and values. But hash tables, as, as can arrays, can be, can be multidimensional. You can have as, as much depth as you want to it, as many dimensions as you want to it. Right? For example, it's very likely that London Server 1 has more than one IP address. If it's got a management interface as well as a production interface, so how would I represent that? Well, the value here doesn't have to be a single value. It could be an array. We could have an array of values in parentheses with the at symbol at the front to indicate that it's an array. So let's say it's also on the address 10.0.0.40. That's another one of its IPs. Now I'll load this up, check our computer's variable. 
and all that information is there. London Server 1, London DC 1. If I want to access an individual element, we can use the dotted notation that we use all throughout PowerShell. Computers gives me everything, but computers dot London SVR 1 just returns the information about London Server 1. If I wanted the first IP address, well, there's an array of IP addresses here. We could request bracket zero bracket. That's going to return the first IP address of London Server 1. Second IP address would be a 1. We can have as many dimensions as we like. We'll take it one step further. What if we want to store more information than just IP addresses? Maybe I want to store location data, asset tag information. Maybe it will just do locations for now. How about I create a hash table? Now I'm going to indent this for clarity. And the first value is going to be IPs. IPs are equal to, and then this array of IP addresses. And then we'll have a location property. Location equals EU. And we'll do the same kind of thing down here for London DC1. Create a hash table. We've got an IPs, except I want to indent that for consistency. We've got an IPs key and we've got a location key. Location equals, this will be EU as well. Now I run this whole thing. If I check for, or check the entire variable computers, everything comes spilling out except the values now. I'd have to dig a little deeper to see what the values are for IPs and location, but we can use again that dotted notation. Dot London Server 1 returns everything about London Server 1. If I want specifically the IPs, we could say, give me the IPs property. And it spells out the IPs. If I want the first IP, bracket zero bracket returns the first one. This isn't necessary. It's just to show that we can have as many dimensions of hash tables within hash tables within arrays, arrays within arrays, whatever is necessary. And it's something that is commonly done in desired state configuration when we're building out these large complex configs using Microsoft's DevOps DSC solution. But we might find hash tables useful in a lot of scenarios, although typically most of your hash tables will be one dimensional.